you are most welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm still your teacher, Teacher Osbert in Warinda. Uh, I welcome you to this new series, which is going to be about food tests. But I want to say that this is not going to be my first. This is not my first episode about practicals. There is a, an episode that I made in 2020. So in case you are visiting for the very first time, just know that this is not my first episode. The other episode that I recorded already uh, in year 2020. So you can check uh, in the YouTube channel there, down and scroll and scroll, you'll be able to see that first video, which is about the food tests. Now, I want to talk about biology practicals. Now, biology practicals uh, involve very many things. If I talk about practicals in general, Biology practicals involve very many things. However, uh, for those ones who are in Uganda, and in this line, I'm going to talk about those ones who are in advanced level biology. Uh, biology, as an exam that is asked about a level as far as practicals are concerned, is divided into these categories. One, uh, there is a part which has something to do with dissection. It has something to do with dissection. There is some part of dissection. This dissection here, we, we, we look at, uh, we cut small organisms, some tiny organisms. For example, we can dissect a mammal. We can dissect a mammal. This includes e.g. E a rat, a rat, a rabbit, those small, small mammals. We can dissect, uh, we can dissect an amphibian, amphibian. For example, e.g. a toad or a frog, a toad or a frog. Here, we can also dissect anthropods. Arthropods, arthropods. Uh, for example, here we have, we are talking about insects. Uh, for example, insects like a what? Like a cockroach. So we have a part where, the, we, are dissect, where we dissect uh, these organisms. Why do we dissect? We dissect as a way of preparing uh, an A-level student, or an advanced student. Uh, we are trying to prepare them for operation. Uh, you know, as you know, most people who do biology at, at, at advanced level, those are people who are aspiring to become doctors. And therefore, as you know, we have surgeons. In the medical field, we have what we call surgeons. So as a way of preparing you to become that surgeon that you wish to be, uh, that's why we begin by also exposing you to um, skills in as far as dissections are concerned. Then we have also got another area, this area, this area number two, we have got what we call physiology. Physiology. In as far as physiology is concerned, here we look at the functioning, functioning of body systems. Yeah, how does your body work? Uh, here we are having practicals. The, uh, practicals in this area are organized to demonstrate how your body functions. So here we are dealing with functioning, functioning of body systems, functioning of body systems, and uh, and in this area. In this area, we talk about things like food tests. We talk about like, uh, things like food tests. Yeah, things like, you know, uh, we have uh, things like transport. Here, transport, we have, uh, we ha in this case, we have area, we have practicals which are in line with the, like osmosis, osmosis, diffusion, diffusion, enzyme activity, enzyme activity, and so on and so forth. So here, we are trying to demonstrate how bodies functioning, how, how body systems function under this area here. Then we have also got another area, number three, which is called anatomy, anatomy. As you know, biology is divided into two main branches. Uh, it is uh, when we talk about biology in general, uh, as far as uh, topics are concerned, yeah, some topics are under physiology. They demonstrate how body systems work. However, some other topics uh, in line with anatomy, they are trying to show structure makeup of different body, uh, body systems. So here, under anatomy, we are looking at the structure makeup, structure makeup, structure features, or structure makeup, structure makeup of bodies of organisms. So in this case, we look at majorly uh, things like flowers, you know, structure of a flower, structure of insects, you know, structure of insects, if it is in all level, in, uh, in ordinary level, we uh, they even go further and look at bones, you know, bones, and so on and so forth. So here we are looking at basically 
a structure with a, so they can bring for you a, a flower and they ask you to describe it, describe how it's made, how it, what, make, what makes it up, to, uh, describe the different features that make it up and so on. All that is anatomy. So those are the three categories of, 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 of uh, those are the three categories of practical, uh, or three areas in practical where we, we try to uh, expose ourselves to. So you who is watching me, uh, in this series, uh, we are going to look at all these things. However, in this first series that I'm, 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 uh, we are starting uh, uh, at this, uh, this time, we are going to begin with one of these, and that is none other than the physiology. So we are going to look more at the physiology, and in this physiology, we are going to look at, uh, at what we call food tests. We are going to look at what we call food tests. So allow me to take you there. So, if I come to food tests, we have different foods. Every day we eat. As a characteristic of living things, living things must carry out what you call nutrition. But have you ever asked yourself the things you eat every day and which nutrients do you get from there? Uh, in front of me here, I have got very many uh, foods, some of the foods that we eat or, uh, sometimes or maybe usually. Uh, I have got, I have got, I have got, yellow bananas. I want to ask you how many times do you eat, do you take or, uh, these yellow bananas here? Do you know which nutrients are here anyway? Aha, uh -huh. I have got an egg here. I've got an egg here. Have you ever asked yourself that you are, have you ever asked yourself what food nutrients are here? Of course I know you know that here we have proteins. However, even in the lab, we are able to get the proteins which are here and make a, make a, make a substance. For example, with me here, I have got a uh, I've got a container here which has got egg albumin. So this albumin which is inside here is, uh, is extracted and we make a solution which is inside here that we are going to explore. We are going to explore and see. So this egg has, has, has proteins, but do you know, do you know, uh, do you know is there, apart from protein, is there any other thing that we can find in this egg? We need to find out in this new series. I have got uh, cooking oil. I've got cooking oil here. Yeah, cooking oil. Which nutrients are in cooking oil? And so on and so forth. I've got a pineapple. This very good, very good fruit here. A pineapple. Which nutrients are here? How, uh, if I eat this pineapple every day, is there anything that I am able to gain? And then I have got a lemon. I've got a lemon. Very, 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 very important. But how often do you eat it? So in this new series, we are going to look at uh, the different nutrients that we're able to uh, look at, uh, that we're able to find in all these, in all these foods and many others. Uh, so we are going to, under food tests, we are going to look at uh, different nutrients, uh, different food, different food nutrients. And uh, as you know, if I may ask you, uh, the different food nutrients that we have, the different food nutrients that we have, I know you know already some of these. For example, we have got carbohydrates. We have got carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, we find it in foods, in foods like what? Food, foods like posho. Yeah, in Uganda here, uh, we eat a lot of posho. Yeah, as you're eating posho, there are carbohydrates there. But almost every food that you, you eat has got some aspect of carbohydrates, if you don't know. Yeah, so we have got carbohydrates. Uh, these carbohydrates are sometimes what we also refer to as, as sugars. As sugars, so we have got we have got sugars. So whichever food you are eating, is there some carbohydrates? And by the way, you need these carbohydrates in large amounts. By the way, hey, if you are to eat on your plate, you should have more carbohydrates on your plate than any other class of food, especially when you are an adolescent. So when you are an adolescent, yeah. So or you are a youth. Reason, of course, you know we need energy. We get it in foods like what I've told you, uh, uh, maize. Those ones who eat maize, uh, foods like sweet potatoes, and the rest in that category. So we have also got food protein. Uh, we have got food nutrients such as what? Such as proteins. Such as proteins. Proteins, we find them in foods like what? We find them in foods like what? E.g. in eggs. Yeah, if I ask you, eggs, but we also those ones who eat beans. Yeah, we also have proteins in beans. Yeah, prote we, have, we have proteins in beans. And Many other foods, we have proteins there. We also have, we also have got, of course, maybe before, before I can continue any further, if I talk about these carbohydrates, we're also going to find out these carbohydrates have good categories. We have got categories, for example, 
we shall find some carbohydrates which are called monosaccharides. Monosaccharides. These ones I talked about them in my uh, in my first episode uh, of food tests that I recorded in 2020. If you check there, we talked about those ones. We also have what we call disaccharides, disaccharides, and we have also got some uh, the foods we call polysaccharides, polysaccharides, polysaccharides. Yeah, we are going to expound more of all those ones when we come to specific test food test for carbohydrates. Uh -huh. We have also got other food nutrients such as what? We have also got lipids. We have also got lipids. Lipids here we have fats and what? We have fats and fats and oils. Fats and oils. What do you know about the difference? What's the difference between fats and oils? I'm asking you. What's the difference between fats and oils? Yeah, fats and oils. Yeah. What well, the difference is that fats, of course, we have very many differences, but what I'm going to give you now is fats, these are uh, these are lipids which are in a solid state. Whereas oils are in a liquid state. Fats are in a solid state. Oils are in a liquid state. Yeah, so for example, this one here, this is a cooking oil. Hey, this one I'm having here is a cooking oil. It's not a fat, it's a cooking oil. Yeah, so we have uh, lipids. These lipids, we find them in foods like what? If, we, if I can, you can give me some examples. We have foods like what? Uh, foods like, foods like uh, milk. No, milk, we have, we have foods like what? Foods like G nuts. Hmm? G nuts, G nuts, and so on and so forth. Sim sim. You know, sim sim, those ones who eat sim sim, we also have a lot of lipids there, and so on and so forth. Sunflower, and so on and so forth. So, we have some plants, we have some plants or some foods which when you eat, you know that you are likely to get a nutrient, you are going to get a nutrient which is known as lipids. We have also got vitamins. We have also got foods we call vitamins. We have got vitamins here. Nutrients we call vitamins. Of course, vitamins, we have got very many types of vitamins very many types of vitamins which are present in very many types of foods or very many foods we eat every day. However, as far as practicals are concerned, we cannot look at all those vitamins, vitamin A, B, complex, uh, C, D, and so on, and E, K, and so on. We cannot look at all those vitamins at a go. However, in this, we are going to explore more on a vitamin which is known as vitamin C. Vitamin C. This vitamin C is found, uh, is what you also call citric acid. It's for, uh, I mean, sorry, sorry, it is what you, it is also called the ascorbic acid. And we find it in uh, citrus fruits. Most of it, we find it in citrus fruits. Fruits like what? Fruits like, like lemon here. We are going to test, we are going to find out how we test for vitamin C in all these citrus fruits and other foods that we have in front of us here. So most of the, most, most, most fruits have got this vitamin C. So we are going to expound more about vitamin C. And I've said this one is found uh, found in area uh, in, in, in foods like what? Like citrus fruits. Citrus fruits. Or oh, basically, most of the fruits we are going to find there, vitamin C. So we have, uh, we have got uh, these key nutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, uh, lipids, vitamins. We have, those, we have got these key foods. Why do we need to understand how we test for them? We need to understand how, we need to understand the food test. Why? Because sometimes, sometimes we tend to eat some of these foods. We tend to eat some of these foods when actually, you know that some of the foods you eat do not have any nutrient. Or even some have very little nutrients. The excess is just, you know, something which is useless or which is even dangerous to your body. But uh, you find that uh, uh, the biggest part is lacking any, uh, is not having any of the nutrients that we are talking about. Or it has just little. Uh, sometimes also these foods we need to run to, to test them, to run out to test them because sometimes uh, we tend to eat excess uh, of some of these foods and we find that uh, they are not important. For example, it's not right for you to keep eating a lot of proteins, to have excess proteins in your body. Why? Because when proteins become excess in your body, they are turned into urea. Urea is a waste product. So it means the more you eat excess proteins, the more you are tasking your liver to do a lot of work to do a lot of, of, of turning that excess protein into, into urea, which has, to be, which has to be excreted. So if I am realizing that the excess of this is not important in my body, excess of the proteins are not important in my body, then I don't need to eat them in excess. Um, for example, when it comes to fats, when you eat a lot of fats, when fats become too much, too much in your body, it means you are likely to suffer from high blood pressure. Why? Some of those fats, we are saying, they when they reach in your body, uh, they, they tend to clog. They tend to clog around your blood vessels. 
They tend to clog, if this is your blood vessel, they tend to clog around these blood vessels here. And when they clog here, they keep on making this passage, this passage where blood is supposed to pass through here. They keep on making it to become more, much, much more narrow. It ends up becoming very narrow, very narrow. And the more narrow it becomes, the more uh, blood will tend to move through it at high pressure, as you know. If I have a big pipe and a small pipe, uh, water moves through a small pipe very fast with a lot of pressure than in a big pipe. So it means the more blood, your blood vessels become narrower, the more blood is likely to move at a very high rate. Just like when you eat fats, you have fats accumulate on your heart, on your hand. That's how also they tend to be if they become too much in your body. So it means I don't need to eat foods which have got a lot of what? A lot of lipids in my body because those excess lipids might be very dangerous to me. However, if you don't have, if you are deficient of these lipids, still it's also not good because lipids have got a role they play. For, like that, for example, lipids are important in insulating our, our bodies against heat loss. On our skin here, below there we have got a fat layer which helps us to not lose heat, especially when it is very cold. So fats help us in, in, for, in for example, insulating our body against heat loss. Ah, ah, fats are important, are important in a way that they are, they are major components of the cell membrane. So your cells have got the main component as, as, as fats. So it means the less you have, the less fats you have, the more you are likely to have issues with your cell formation. Why? Because of their role in as far as cell membrane is concerned. So when it comes to vitamins, vitamins, these ones had a pass. Had a pass. Actually, yeah, these ones, we, of course, we don't need them in excess, but we need vitamins because uh, vitamins are important in enabling our bodies to, have, to avoid what? To avoid getting diseases because with vitamins, they, they boost our immunity. These are important in boosting our immunity. Mm -hmm. these, ones, these ones are important in boosting immunity, boosting immunity, boosting our immunity. So it means when you don't have them, you are... Likely, you are making your body, you are making your, your, your body likely to be attacked by a lot of what? A lot of, a lot of diseases. Aha, uh -huh. talk about carbohydrates. These carbohydrates are energy-giving foods. You know what happens to you when you don't have, when you don't have energy. When you, have, when you don't have energy, you know what happens to you. You feel weak. You feel weak. But now, good thing with carbohydrates, because even when carbohydrates become too much, yes, when, of course, they're not supposed to be too much, but when they become too much, uh, the, at least the body can store them and use them later. Uh, however, when they're also too much, you know, carbohydrates, when they're in excess, they can be turned into fats. And I've already told you about the effects of fats when they are too much in your body. But at least carbohydrates, when they're in excess, they can be stored in a given form like glycogen, uh, glycogen, which can later be used when you are in starvation, when you are starving, or when you, don't have, when you, have, not take, when you have taken them without, what? without eating. So we are going to look at all these. We are going to look at all these one by one. And therefore, there are, I therefore request that you don't miss out any of the videos which are going to come now. I want to also use this lesson here to tell you about key things, about key things, key points, key points in line with practicals, key points to note, key points to note in line with practicals, key points to note, key points to note when it comes to practicals in line with food tests. One, as far as practicals are concerned, you are expected to know how we write procedure. You are supposed to know how we write the procedure. In this procedure, you are supposed to know, you are supposed to take note of the following. One, when I'm carrying out food tests, which reagent which, do, which reagent do I use for a given food when I'm testing a given food? Uh -huh. And then, which amount, which amount do I use? Which amount do I use? How much of the reagent, for example, am I supposed to use versus the quantity of the food that I am having? Now, in practicals, we shall use here, as far as, as, far as food is concerned, we shall use small, Small samples. We yes, use small samples. And as far as food is concerned, they will usually use small samples. Likewise, in the reagents here, we also use small samples. Even for the reagents, we also use small samples. You don't usually use a lot. You don't need to use a lot for just carrying out a test, 
A test you need a small. For example, if they are going to carry out a test on your blood, do they remove the whole blood in your body? No, they just move like a small sample, then they go and test. So even when you are doing food tests, we usually use small, small samples. I've seen students, you want to use excess. Whenever you say them, you tell them that this is the solution you have provided with, the students want to use excess of all the things. But you're supposed to use very small samples. Why? I'm even telling that when you go to the hospital and you are sick, they don't remove all the blood in your body to test if you have malaria. No, they just remove a small sample and they're able to, uh, to find out if it has what they are looking for. So we also use small samples. Reagents. You are supposed to take note of the reagents. You are supposed to tell us the state of the reagents. Why? Some reagents are in solution. Some, uh, so you're supposed, if it's a solution, you're supposed to tell us a solution. You're supposed to tell us a solution. For example, here in terms of reagents, in terms of reagents, for example, in terms of reagents, for example, reagents versus, versus the nutrients, versus the nutrient being tested. We have got the following reagents. For example, if you are testing for carbohydrates, if you are testing for carbohydrates, we have a reagent which is known as Benedict's what? We have a reagent which is known as Benedict's solution. Benedict's solution. Now, Benedict's solution is how? Benedict's solution is here uh, in front of me. We have, here it is Benedict's solution. I hope you can see. This is how Benedict's solution looks like. I hope you, you can see. This is a Benedict's solution. This is how it looks like, blue in color. Now, you're supposed to know that this, that this is the reagent that we use for testing for carbohydrates. But we also have other reagents. For example, we combine, we have other reagents that we also use apart from Benedict's. We have hydrochloric acid. We have other, 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 other reagents. For example, we have hydrochloric acid. Hmm? Hydrochloric, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid. And we are saying this hydrochloric acid is dilute. That you do not conk. For example, with me here, I have got, um, I have got my, my hydrochloric acid here. Very colorless. Hmm? My hydrochloric acid is here. We use the dilute. Why? We don't use conk. Conk might burn by, my, by mistake. It might burn. So we use the dilute. Hmm? So when I talk about the state, when I talk about the state, I'm meaning, is it dilute or it is conk? So if it is dilute, you're supposed to ensure, you're supposed to tell us that it is dilute. If it is conk, you're supposed to tell us it is conk. Uh -huh. If it's a solution, tell us the solution. Hey. For example, uh, then we also have sodium hydroxide. We have got sodium. We have got sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide. But this sodium hydroxide, this sodium hydroxide is a solution. Is a solution. And I'm emphasizing that word solution. Why? Because as you know, we have also got what we call sodium pellets. Sodium, sodium, which is like in form of tablets. But here, I'm talking about sodium, which is a solution, like do you see here, a solution. Hmm? So you're supposed to be very, 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 very careful as far as procedures are concerned. Uh -huh. uh, and then we are saying, how much of the Benedict's am I supposed to use? How much hydrochloric acid am I supposed to use? How much sodium hydroxide solution am I, am I supposed to use? Versus the amount of the nutrients that I'm having that I'm trying out, whose test I'm carrying out. So you need to take note of that. Reagent, we need to know about the amount. And you are saying the amount should be corresponding very well with the reagent. Why? Because that is key. That is key. So we are saying procedure. You're supposed to, to, to also take note of the condition. Of the condition. Why? Because for some tests, as we are going to see, for some tests, that's why on me, with me here, I have got a stove here. Some tests require us to boil. So therefore, we are supposed to what? We are going to heat at some point for some tests. Others don't, don't require boiling. And if it is boiling, it is boiling, not heating. Some students, when they talk about boiling, they take it to be heating. So some students say that maybe, for example, we shall find out that in some tests, we are supposed to boil. And then a student say, says we heat. That is not right. Why? Because I can heat something and doesn't boil. I can heat something and doesn't, but I can heat water, but the, when the water that has not boiled. So if it is boiling, it is boiling. If it is heating, it's supposed to be heating. If it is shaking, it's supposed to be shaking. So you need to be very, 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 very careful in as far as the procedure is concerned. Which reagent, which amount do we have? Which amount of, here we're talking about the amount of the reagent and the amount of the what? Of the food. The two must be corrected. And then we are saying, is there any condition? Do we need to heat? Oh, we don't need to heat. Why? 
are you supposed to know much about the procedure? Is because I'm, I've told you that we are training you for those ones who are being trained to become doctors or to work in a medical field. If you are going to carry out a, a, a given surgery, surgery, there is a procedure that you are supposed to follow. There is a procedure you are supposed to follow to do it. In case you do any mistake, then you are putting life of somebody at stake. You are putting life of somebody at stake. So that's why, as a training, you're supposed to know these procedures for these simple things as we are training you for the bigger, the bigger things. Hope you are following me. By the way, have you subscribed yet? If you haven't subscribed, please tap in that subscription uh, button. And uh, we are saying also, uh, in case you have some of your friends around, please forward some of these links to them. Let's continue. Let's continue. Now, I've said procedure, you're supposed to take note of the reagent. Which reagent am I supposed to use on this food nutrient? Which amount of the reagent and which amount of the, of the food solution that I'm, I'm, I'm testing am I supposed to use? Is there any condition for the reaction to take place? If you know these ones, then you are going to find out life, well, life is going to be very easy in as far as practicals are concerned. Number two. Uh, number two, uh, here I've talked about carbohydrates, but we have also other foods. For example, we have seen proteins. Proteins uh, use some um, reagents. For example, we have got the, in, in protein, we, have, we use sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide solution, sodium hydroxide solution, which I've already shown you. We have got copper 2 sulfate. We have got copper 2 sulfate solution, copper 2 sulfate solution, which is uh, in front of us here. We have got copper to sulfate solution. I hope you see this copper to sulfate one, the color resembles that one for, 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 for Benedict's. Mm? So you need to be very careful. You might find yourself adding Benedict's thing, it is copper to sulfate. So we have copper to sulfate, which is a solution. Why? Because we also have copper to sulfate crystals. We have copper to sulfate crystals. So we are supposed to use a solution. So even in your procedure, you're supposed to state it very clearly that it's a solution, not crystals. Hope you are with me. Uh huh. Talk about. Uh, we talk about other things like vitamins. We talk about like vitamins. Hmm? Vitamins, we use, a, uh, we use a reagent which is known as DCPIP. DCPIP is here in front of us here. We have DCPIP. Uh, yeah, I am having DCPIP solution here. When you see this also blue, it is also blue by the way. But this blue is deep, it's, it's deep blue uh, compared to this one for the copper 2 sulfate and for Benedict solution. Yeah, this is DCPIP solution. Because we also have a, we have a powder of DCPIP. Hey, we are going to understand how it works when you reach, when you reach on that. Uh -huh, and then, and so on and so forth. Lipids, lipids, we use ethanol. Hmm, we use ethanol. I have ethanol here. Hmm, I have ethanol. I hope you can see this is the colorless ethanol, ethanol, pure ethanol. This is the, uh, 97. This is, I mean, this is 97%. 97%. Yeah, ethanol. Hmm, so we use ethanol. We use water. We use water, distilled water. We, have, we use water from our taps. You see taps near, nearby me, and so on and so forth. So you're supposed to know uh, these things very, 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 very carefully. That is key point number one about uh, procedure. Key point number two. Key point number two. Here it was about procedure. Key point number two is key point number two is about observation. Observation. What am I talking about observation? Observation are important because you're supposed to observe very after you have done a given procedure, you are supposed to make sure that these observations are accurate. Are accurate. You're supposed to make accurate observations. Why? Because if these observations are not correct, you can be a practical and everything you get is very correct. But you find that when it comes to observations, some people may be a color blind, others, I don't know, but if somebody does the practical very well, but it comes to observation, he, he writes something different. So you're supposed to observe very carefully. Why? It is from the observation that you have gotten that you are able to make a logical and a true conclusion. So a key area number three is the conclusion. Conclusion is conclusion. So we are supposed to know the observation very carefully, a very correct observation, to make very correct observation, and you're supposed to also tell us to, to, know about the, uh, to make from the right observation, you're able to make a right conclusion. And you're saying this conclusion must also be, it must be, it must be logical. It must be logical. Now, let me first go back about observation. In observation, if, when you add, when you mix reagents with the foods, hmm, you're supposed to tell us, first of all, if you're supposed to tell us the initial color. The initial color. 
and state, the initial color and the state of the reagent you had at first. After that, you're supposed to tell us, you're supposed to tell us the final color, or sometimes, okay, we, sometimes we can have interwati, intermediate color or state of what you get. And then after you're supposed to tell us the final color, the final color and state of what you have got. For example, as we shall see, we are going to find out when you get food, some food solution, you add Benedicts. Of course, that solution where you add Benedicts must have an initial, an initial color. So you first tell us that. If it's a solution, you tell us it's a solution. Then after, when you start boiling, you see some colors in between there. But even after boiling, you find that there is some color that you get finally at the end of everything. So you're supposed to tell us all these things. However, for some practicals, for some practicals, as we shall see, for some practicals, we don't, some, some of this one here, we may not need it. For some, for some practicals, we may not need that intermediate color. We may just need the color after you have added everything. And then we shall need the initial and then the final color after you have added all the other things. Uh, so when I talk about intermediate, some people confuse it with, the, uh, for example, for a procedure which has more than one reagent, some people confuse it in a way that uh, this one is meaning you tell us the initial color, and then after you tell us the color after adding uh, another reagent, then after you tell us the color after adding a third reagent, then after you tell us the color after adding the, five, the fourth reagent. No. In this case, we are meaning that you tell us the initial color, then add all those reagents, add all those reagents like they have been telling you to do, then after. You tell us the initial, you tell us the final color, you tell us the final color after you have added all those reagents. Yeah, so that's what we are meaning here. So here in conclusion, here in conclusion, when I talk about logical, there are something maybe I can share with you here about the conclusion. We need to find out in your conclusion how much is something present, is something which is present or it is absent. Now we are saying if it is present, if present, we are saying how much, how much of it is present. Because for some foods, for example, if you look at this pineapple, I don't think if I'm looking at sugars, the sugars which are present here, I don't know if I ever, ever, ever eaten a pineapple, I don't think the sugars which are here, down here, are the same quantity as the sugars which are on the upper part here. From where you see this, you see it. I, don't, I think here, down here, we have a lot of sugars compared. So if the practical has come and is asking you to determine the sugars which are present here, present here and present at the, at, the, at the top. I expect some variation. So you're supposed to be careful to also tell us, are the sugars much or they are moderate or they are little? And for most of the other practicals, we also need are very, very careful about too, the quantity, about the quantity of the nutrient which is present, about the quantity of the nutrient which is present. So you're supposed to tell us how much of that substance is present. And of course, if it's absent, you don't need to tell us how much is absent. Yeah, as some of you people do. Now, please join with me. Join with me in the next episode as we now start looking at one by one. Thank you very much. God bless you.